Hi folks, uh, welcome to the Library Cafe. My name is Frank and this is my colleague Saoirse. Hi. Uh, we're going to talk about study and exam preparation. Um, last week our colleagues Carol and Kieran hosted the cafe and they covered successful assignments, essay writing and structuring. And as I said this week, we're going to study study and exam uh, preparation. Yeah. Today is part one of a two parter on this subject. It's an area of huge significance to you in the next few weeks, and we wanted to give it all the attention that it deserves. Yeah. So we sent out a question there on Monday and we got a great response to it. The question was, what are some of the things that you find difficult about studying? So this week we plan to look at revision techniques, library supports and exam preparation. We're going to start with uh, exam or we're going to start with revision techniques and this will cover a lot of the answers that we received to the question. So I'm going to ask Saoirse, what advice would you give to students? What is the best approach to take? First of all, I actually thought I was going to read out the question, so there we go. Um, but yeah, I have some kind of four key points that we'll have a little quick chat about, and then we're going to get to some supports um, that you will find on the library homepage. But anyway, we're going to start off with develop a study schedule and routine. So this is really important to, to, um, to develop that schedule. It's to organise your work and um, to also make that schedule um, realistic. So I think when people you know, create timetables and schedules, they just throw everything in there and go, great, I'm gonna cover loads. And it's not realistic. Make sure that you put in a, you know, a realistic amount of um, topics and breaks as well, include those breaks in your schedule. I think that's really important. And when you create a schedule, the other, I suppose, um, benefit of doing this is that you feel more motivated and productive as well. Because, you know, when you look back on Friday and see everything that you've covered, you don't feel as overwhelmed. You feel like, well, I'm actually getting on top of this. So the study schedule is really, really important. And then just kind of putting that into your routine, whether it's starting in the morning in your study and taking your kind of break at lunchtime or whatever suits you, whatever way you study best. But definitely start with having that schedule. OK, and for it to be realistic, don't just throw like, loads of different topics in there. The other um, kind of tip I'd say is revision aids. So I myself, when I was a student, used um, flashcards and post-its. And me and my me and Frank were talking about it and he was saying that he used mind maps. So was it mind maps, Frank? Yeah, said? mind maps, you know, and if you just Google mind maps, you'll see exactly what they are. Yeah. And uh, different prongs uh, coming out from your research question and different ideas. And it's a great one too. It's fair, it's visual. So you'll remember it an awful lot easier. I was just going to say that it's visual. So that's really, some people prefer their kind of notes and things like that. As I said, the post-its, the writing, and some people prefer that kind of visual aid. So whatever kind of person you are, definitely make the most out of them. And then Another question that we got was, I'm not focused. So one way of, of kind of debunking that not being able to focus is to organise yourself. So organise yourself with your schedule and your work, but organise yourself physically in your workspace. So make sure it's not cluttered. Make sure you have the resources that you need. You don't have your phone, any other distractions like that. Um, and I was going to say something else actually about being focused. I know it's completely gone out of my head. A good idea, you know, is maybe to get in contact with one of your friends and divide up. That's a bit what of it work. was, Frank. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, and um, you know, say I'm going to cover the first three chapters. Maybe your friend covered the next three. Yeah. Uh, write out your notes, share them, and get together maybe on a Teams call or go for a walk if you live near each other, and discuss it. And um, that splits up the work. You're doing half, she's doing the other half, and um, you get through it an awful lot quicker. And you know what, actually, Frank, my point was about the distractions. Mm. So if you don't have that kind of quiet workspace, invest in a pair of headphones to kind of, you know, remove all that background noise, anything like that. There are ways around it because we really do empathise and understand that some students just don't have that workspace. So think inside the box, what, what could help me to focus that little or bit? Get better. earplugs. Earplugs is a good one as well. Stick in a pair of earplugs and Absolutely. just cut out the noise for that period. Yeah. Have, have short study sessions. Definitely. and break them up quite often and don't spend too long on any one topic and you know it's very important as well when you're finished doing a bit of study get up and go for a walk have a bit of exercise yeah. clear your head take the breaks absolutely and that's all to do with mm. focus being focused um, and the last one i think this is a really good point so understand what you're studying 
OK, and a really good way of doing this is writing and um, what you've learned in your own opinion, in your own voice. I find myself that when I read something, you know, I might not remember because it's in someone else's words or I don't un you know, necessarily understand exactly what they mean or the key points. So when you write it in your own words, in your own points, I feel that you memorize it a lot better. You understand it a lot better. So that's something I think writing anything down in general helps you to memorize something. I think a good thing with your notes as well is that um, if you record them, record them onto your phone. And when you do go out for a walk in between, you can be listening to them. And uh, you'll Very pick true. up on anomalies uh, of what you've written an awful lot easier when you hear it Absolutely. Uh, as opposed to, to, to reading it. Very, very true. So they were kind of our key points. You've probably heard them before, but it is nice just to you know, reiterate them here again. And um, now we're, what we're going to do is from the tips, we're going to move on to some of the supports that we have uh, in our support for students tab of the Working Remotely Guide. So I'm going to just share my screen and we're going to head into it. So here we are, and you've probably seen um, myself and my colleagues do this before. You go into guides and tutorials. You are in all guides, A to B, and then we're down to W. So where are we? There we go. And then one way you can go in is here, this tab at the top, support for students, or you can click into this part. I am a student, so this content is specifically <coughs> for you. So we actually did have a question, um, Frank, wasn't I don't have a workspace to study at home? Yeah. Was that one of the questions that we had? So if you look here, there are um, spaces, places to study on campus. And if you just click into this button, you will find where you can actually go as well. So this is really handy. This guide or this tab is updated regularly so when we get you know information about studying about exams anything at all that's current at the moment we'll be putting it in here so definitely keep looking at this particular tab we have some tips on how to study smarter not harder so it was some of the key points we touched <clears throat> on um just a little bit a while ago and um there was something else actually here oh yeah our library supports and resources so you know if you're struggling with referencing searching there was actually a question i can't find relevant research or information around my assignment or my exam you we have a guide successful searching guide and actually it's linked here so you can actually go directly to the guides um, and this is all within the supports for students tab there's a whole lot of information here mm -hmm. and just again make sure you are logged in off campus when you want to access anything or if you want to search within the library so they are our support. I definitely recommend um, for you to go in and have a look at this as it's updated regularly. So, you know, by going in once, it doesn't mean that, you know, you've seen everything. Um, so I'm just going to unshare my screen and we have one more point to cover, don't we, Frank? We're uh, covering exam preparation. Yeah. So the timetable for the summer exams will be released on the 29th of March. So when that happens, find out when your exams are on. And like Sirsha said in revision techniques, draw up a schedule of when, where and what format the exam is going to take. Yeah. Check out the examinations page on the university website and be aware of any information that you will need, including the rules and regulations for the exams. Very important. And there'll be a variety of different exams and depending on COVID, you may be on or off the campus. So I kind of going back to the revision tips, you know, plan your schedule to give you plenty of time to study for each exam. You know, um, plan your time effectively review so that you know you can review concepts and um, talk your way through ideas, test yourself and find out what you don't know. And all of this will help you to feel more confident going into the exam. Study breaks are important eating, sleeping, even socializing if you can, and exercising. Staying healthy is the key to your exam success, because if you're not right. of the right frame of mind, um, you won't be, you know, um, you won't be in good, good place going in. One of the things to watch out for as well is plagiarism. You know, it's one of the most common and easily avoided uh, academic offenses. And one way to stay on track um, if you're doing a take home exam or an open book exam is knowing how to correctly cite your primary source material. Yeah. Follow the rules laid out by your lecturer 
and check the referencing guides used in the library. Yeah. And on that page that uh, Saoirse showed you the support for students, you'll get information there on how to find your referencing guides. You know, each exam is different, so do some research. Absolutely. Uh, contact your lecturer, what's going to be covered, what format the exam will take, you know, and how much it counts towards your final grade. Look at the past exam papers. All this is knowledge on your behalf and knowledge is power. And when you go to the exam, whether it's on campus or off campus, make sure you're on time for it. Yeah. Uh, it's more important to be, you know, a little early or a good bit early even than it is to be a little late. Um, so those are our tips and um, our colleagues Helen and Rachel will be here next week to discuss part two of study and exam preparation. And until then, it's bye from us. All the best. Thanks a million. Bye.